What's up guys, welcome back to So Many Parks So Little Time, or as I like to call it, Scram Leopards of Latvia. So today we are at SeaWorld San Diego. This is the last SeaWorld parks we need in the So Many Parks series, and also this is my first time at SeaWorld San Diego. Yeah, it's weird, this is the original SeaWorld park, the very first one, and it took me this long to get here. But yeah, just like uh, SeaWorld Orlando and SeaWorld San Antonio, this is a marine life theme park. They do a lot of rescue work, they have a lot of animal and education exhibits around the park, but they also have a plethora of thrill coasters and thrill rides. Headlining 2022 is the brand new Emperor BM Dive Coaster. Now, as of this recording, uh, it's still in preview, so it's not fully open to the public yet, but because of previews, I'm going to be able to ride it today, and I am very excited for this. This is the first of the uh, sort of smaller scale BM Dive Coasters that I'll be riding. I've heard good things about the coaster, and as for the park, I haven't heard too, too many about it. Seems like it gets sort of overshadowed by its Orlando counterpart. So I'm very excited to try this place. So it's a beautiful day. It's going to be a great time. So let's go check out SeaWorld San Diego. really really enjoy them. It's actually a pretty full package and a very small footprint. You got a launch, granted it's not a great launch, sorry I'm completely blacked out here. It's not a great launch but you get multiple passes and then the shot up the tower and the front row you get some really awesome air time and then you get some hang time on the barrel roll and then if you're in the back car on the non-inverted loop you get some standing ejector air time. Yeah the trains are not the most comfortable but everything else about the ride is fantastic and that's why I really enjoy these things and will always ride them every time I'm in a park with one. <laughs>
So, Journey to Atlantis is unfortunately down for maintenance today. I was really hoping that it would be open by the time I arrive here, but not surprised to see it still down. It is technically the off season. I've heard that this one is not as good as the one in Orlando, but I mean, it, it looks fun. The coaster sections look really fun. So I'll definitely be back another time to uh, complete this ride. Until then, let's move on with the rest of SeaWorld San Diego.
So Emperor was fun. It is by far the smallest B&M dive coaster I've been on, and it actually kind of shows. The drop it does not go on forever like uh, it does on uh, Sheikra or Griffin or any of the other large scale ones, but it does feel like it has the same power as most of the uh, B&M dive coasters. Hello. <laughs> it's very smooth, very floaty, and it's not very forceful, which kind of surprised me a little bit, but at the same time, it makes it a bit more accessible to a broader audience. It does have a 52 inch height requirement versus a 54 on most of the other B&M coasters, but easily the highlight of the ride is the view from the top. It just keeps on getting better and better. You get a, oh, hello, you get a great view of uh, the San Diego skyline, but then as you circle around, you get uh, just this amazing view of Mission Bay. That drop, you can hear, uh, it's a, it's a good one. It's, I know I'm contradicting myself, but it is a fun ride. So yeah, overall, winner for SeaWorld. It's not the best dive coaster, but it's a good one. It's a very good ride. Thank <laughs> you. 
So, Manta was one of Mock Ride's very first launch roller coasters, and it's also geared more towards families, but oddly enough, I feel like the launch on this ride is somehow more powerful than their more bigger rides like uh, Time Traveler or Capital Bullet Train or even Velociraptor. That being said, it is a little bit of a gentler ride, but that doesn't mean there isn't a thrill aspect to it. There is still, like I said, the aforementioned powerful launch, there is some airtime and some really nice laterals, and then the seating position, you are very high up, so you get a lot of nice wind from side to side on some of those turns. Ryan makes very good use of the terrain. I believe when it was built, uh, the park was still under some very strict uh, height requirements, and to keep the a ride this low, I don't think it goes above like 30 feet. It's a very fun ride in that aspect. For your safety and safety of others, all we ask is please no standing on the ride. Go ahead, sit back, relax, and enjoy your ride. Welcome aboard the SeaWorld Sky Tower. For your safety, we ask that you please remain seated.
It's time for one quick lap of SeaWorld San Diego. Now, this is a big park. There's a lot of uh, ways to get around, so I'm not going to show everything. I will point out things if I'm sort of uh, traveling out of my way, but yeah, I'm not going to go on every single path. But uh, yeah, we are at the front of the park, which is more towards the center, which I kind of like because then you can get to just about anywhere, uh, anyhow. So uh, over down that way is how you're going to get to Electric Eel. That's the most direct way to get there. Uh, but for now, we're going to actually go this way. It's uh, towards the center hub. We are going to double back around that way, so don't you worry. Just like at uh, SeaWorld Orlando, it is the uh, Seven Seas Food Festival, but I didn't feel like dropping another $85 on uh, food cards, no matter how uh, good the food is here. So maybe another time. All right, so going to bear right. This is sort of the uh, kids area section of the park. At least I think it is. I still don't quite know the layout of this park. It's a busy day today. It's uh, towards the beginning of spring break, so this is only going to get more and more crowded. 
Bay of Play is what this area is called. I actually haven't uh, been to this part of the park yet. I just was sort of uh, trying to figure out the best way to walk around. But yeah, we are still heading towards Electric Eel, and that's also where Emperor and Journey to Atlantis are. Congratulations to that winner. Yep, just got some uh, typical Midway games here. Some nice Midway fare. All right. So, over down that way is, again, to get to uh, Electric Eel and uh, Journey to Atlantis and Emperor. Uh, you can go to those sections of the video to get more detailed views of what that area looks like. But we're going to continue this way towards the uh, Dolphin Days. And judging by that packed stadium, looks like there's a show going on. Yep, their 3 o'clock show just started. Calypso Bay Smokehouse. It smells delicious there. And Going down that way will get you to uh, Wild Arctic, the penguins, and I believe the sharks as well. Now, I have not been to this section of the park, so if I start going into uh, uncharted territory, then I apologize to all SeaWorld staff. But uh, here's Turtle Reef, which appears to be closed. It's unfortunate, but it is still kind of the off-season, so we're in that sort of separate mix where uh, various attractions are beginning to reopen from refurbishment and others are still closed. But that is a-okay. The park's got to do what the park's got to do. This is the infamous uh, stroller parking lot. This is where all the strollers come to uh, feast, I guess. Yeah, it's because of the dolphin show. A uh, bit of a traffic jam here. Look at it. Look at it. You want to be in the background? Okay. Let's feel that. All right, just some snacks out here. All right, let's uh, bear this way. Hopefully, this isn't a dead end. I consulted the map for like. 30 seconds, so if this route is not the most optimal, then I apologize. But that's why it's one quick lap. We've got a very highly themed Troika style ride. It's really cool. Riptide Rescue. Overall, Overall, this park has much better options for the 48-inch and under demographic of families than SeaWorld Orlando does, especially SeaWorld Orlando. Then now over here is Mission Bay. Just a beautiful, scenic, picturesque view. It really is one of the strengths of this park, its location. Then we're just gonna sort of skedaddle on this side of the park a bit. I know it's not really showing a lot, but it's showing enough. We will double by Manta, no, so you will be able to see that. I like that, uh, or I like this path. It's uh, nice and quiet, especially compared to all the crowds bustling towards the front of the park. The uh, sky ride that goes over Mission Bay is absolutely spectacular. I do wish it was ever so slightly longer, but can't really complain. The park also has these uh, patches of green grass just uh, every couple, uh, every now and then, and I really like it. All 
right, we're gonna emerge from the section and over here is Manta, West Coast Manta. I do like the flying coaster better, but that doesn't mean that Manta here is not a, uh, isn't a good ride. It's a, it's a really good ride. I was going to take the uh, shorter route to, uh, actually, yeah, let's go the shorter route. We got to uh, go into Mantis Plaza. Over in that direction are more family-oriented rides. And there's also Tidal Twister, which is a Sky Warp ride. I'm haven't been on one of those yet. I kind of wanted to give one, uh, one a try, despite its, uh, you know, reputation. But it's not open yet. So next time. Okay. Here is uh, Ray Tank. Ray can uh, pet a stingray. Wait, what? Over here is up where uh, Manta's entrance is. It's also uh, the gift shop for Manta. This is a bit of a bottleneck, so just gotta squeeze on through. I love the, I do love the entrance plaza for Manta though, it makes a great statement. It is probably the best looking ride in the park. Okay, I guess we'll uh, shimmy over to the right here. Another view of Manta. I actually can't quite, oh, Orca Encounters. That's where you can find the uh, Orca show that you'll find a video either before or after, I can't remember. Or it's not that I don't remember, it's just I haven't edited this video yet. More exhibits, uh, Sky Tower's over that way as well. Do you like the uh, view of Journey to Atlantis you've got from back here? And we are approaching the front of the park. Go through the bubbles. Before we conclude, just going to do a mighty quick pass through the SeaWorld store, just to show you guys a little bit of that. Ooh, I spy more magnets. the touch tanks with a little cleaner fish that uh like to gently nibble on you. Okay and we're back to our little nook where we started things off. 
And that will conclude one quick lap of SeaWorld San Diego. Tunnel at Chicago O'Hare. shortest shark tunnel I've ever been through. So cool though. A shark tunnel is better than no shark tunnel. That was SeaWorld San Diego in San Diego, and this was a very, very fun park. I've now been to all of the SeaWorld parks except for Sesame Place San Diego. As far as the uh, SeaWorld branded parks, I think this is on a weaker level just in terms of thrill rides. But even still, it's still a very high quality park, and the thrills here are absolutely worth coming out of your way for. The exhibits are all on par with the uh, SeaWorld quality. And then just the employees here, they're very friendly, and I had several friendly interactions with all the people here. It's a good park. I probably won't be able to uh, visit this one as much as the other two just because of how uh, prohibitive the location is for me. But even still, if you have a chance to uh, come visit this park for the first time, come ride Emperor, Electric Eel, Manta, those are all very fun rides. And I do want to come back for Journey to Atlantis because that ride does look like a ton of fun. And just the whole Mission Bay area is just drop dead beautiful. So yeah, great day and that is going to do it for SeaWorld San Diego. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. We'll see which park we're at. Take care.